Okay, in this video we're going to go through how to do reimbursable expenses or uh, billing for time and expenses, time and materials, right? Uh, so basically there are four things in QuickBooks that we can bill for, right, when we're adding them to an invoice. So the way to see those four things is open up any invoice and we have this button up top it says add time and costs, okay? So we have time that we can bill for. I'll show you how to add that. Expenses, mileage, which we do have another video on that, uh, and then items, all right? So before we go into this, I did want to just mention there are preferences around um, reimbursable expenses or time materials. So the first one is under time and expenses here. So you have to make sure if you're tracking reimbursable time, you want to track it. Do you track time? Yes. And then uh, do you want to mark all time entries as billable? So do you want that billable box to default check off anytime you assign a customer to that line on the time card? Yes or no? Then we have invoicing options. So create invoices from a list of time and expenses, right? If you want to do that, um, track reimburse expenses as income. Okay, so that's just gonna combine the expenses and put it into an income account. You can, or you know, on the expense side, it'll hit expense. On the income, it'll hit income. You can also do that by having a um, double-sided item. Mark all expenses as billable. So again, on a bill or a credit card or anything like that, if you put a customer in, do you want that billable box automatically to be checked? And then do you have a default markup percentage on expenses? Okay. All right. And then we also have under sales and customers, we have my preferences. And under my preferences, so this is on a per user basis, you can add time and cost to invoices so what that means is that if you cr go to create an invoice for a customer and that customer has time or materials or whatever that needs that has been marked billable against that particular customer or job do you want it to prompt right to add the the time and materials do you not want to add it and if you don't want to add it you can always add it by clicking the button on the invoice itself or do you want it to ask you what to do? Okay, and that's on a per user basis. So if you keep on getting that pop-up and it doesn't really apply to you, you can go turn this off by saying don't add. Okay. All right, so time, of course, use a weekly timesheet. You select your employee or your vendor. You put in your customer or job that we're working on. So I'm just going to create a new job under this one. Okay, we select the service item, and if you're doing payroll through QuickBooks, you can select the payroll item here. Uh, any notes will carry forward, or you can, there's a preference around that. So, did stuff, and I'm going to say eight and four. And notice because I have that preference, it's autom automatically marked as billable. Now, if I weren't going to bill for this, or I didn't want it to prom pop up when I create the invoice, so that prompt to pop up, then I would uncheck this and then it would still assign it to the customer, but it's not going to be something where it reminds me to invoice for this timesheet. Okay, so save and close there. Uh, oh, this has payroll turned on, so it wants this. Okay, then uh, we have where I'm going to do mileage quickly. Okay, so we come in here and enter vehicle mileage. So choose vehicle, car, and then we're gonna say total miles was 500, and the customer was job one again, and the item, you have to have an item for mileage, right? To bill it, so mileage. And I'm just gonna say it's another charge, and we charge 55 cents per mile. And again, if you want it to be double-sided, right, where when you pay it out, it hits an expense account, um, you check that little box there, and then that way, if you pay for mileage, you can it'll hit the expense account. When you charge for mileage, it hits the revenue account. Okay. Then we're going to talk about expenses and items, and I can do this on again a write checks transaction. I can do it on a credit card transaction, or I can do it on a bill. I'm just going to do it on a bill here, and let's expand that a little bit. So on the expenses side, so let's do a bill. I can add it to an expense. So let's say we have, I don't know, advertising expense. 
and it's $500, and I'm assigning it again to job one. It's billable, and then the items, of course, is just the items tab on these type of transactions. And I'm going to say that we had a ceiling fixture for job one, billable, etc. Now, when it comes to inventory parts, Marking it as billable is not very effective, actually, so I don't want to choose an inventory part, right? Because with inventory parts, it assigns the cost to the customer at the time of sale, right? Because it debits AR, credits sales, and then it debits uh, your cost of goods sold and credits your inventory account because it does all four with you when you're dealing with inventory parts. So usually, if we're doing any kind of billable time and expenses, where we're gonna charge it to the customer, it's a non-inventory part or a service item or an other charge or something like that. So I'm just gonna say non-stock item. Okay, and again, job one. And keep it billable. Okay, so now when I go in to create my invoice, so I choose job one, and I have it prompted, right, to pop up, or what do I want to do? and I can use this as a preference. So it pops up and says, hey, you have outstanding billable time and cost. Do you want to add it to this invoice or do you want to exclude it? You can add them later. And again, if you want to add them later, this button's always here, okay? So when I look at this, a couple things. So this started new a couple years ago. Um, they do have the quantity, so I have two time to add. I have one expense to add, one mileage, and one item. Now notice that on this one, custom work, it doesn't have a rate, okay? So if I were to add these two things here, I'm actually gonna hit cancel here. The reason it doesn't have a rate is because custom work doesn't have a sales price. So always think about like, where where's that coming from? Now that it has a sales price, the rate will come through for me, okay? A couple things to note when we're doing these reimbursable expenses. So you can select all here. You can choose to hide some. So if you decide you don't want to bill for it, you know, I'm gonna bill for those eight hours, but those four hours I'm not gonna bill for, I can hide it and that way it will not show up anymore on my list of expenses to bill my customer for. I have some options here. So I can choose to combine the activities with the same service item and rate all on one line. Okay, or I can say enter a separate line on the invoice for each activity. And then again, we can choose to include the activity notes, include the item descriptions, or the notes and descriptions, right? So that would be the notes from the time card. So if I say notes and description, okay, check these guys off. Remember how I said I did stuff, right? So it pulled that did stuff in there. And again, let's expand this a little bit here. Okay. So I added my time and notice that it's kind of like when you're reconciling, I've added it, but I haven't saved it yet. So it keeps it with that little asterisk in there. The expenses in here, so I can choose my expense. I don't have a default markup right now, or maybe I did have a default markup, but the markup amount you can set in here. And then you can say what your markup account is going to be. So again, revenues, and I can select and add that. Okay. And then also you have the option here. So if you had several expenses that you're billing for, you can say print the selected time and cost as one invoice line item, right? So this is a global across all four. So we have um, the details of course in here, but everything that goes onto the invoice itself is just one line item, okay? We can add the mileage. Again, it picks up 500 miles, 55 cents. And there are some options again there, similar to time. All right, and then of course we have our items here. And the item, why it doesn't ask for a markup, right, is because the item itself should have a sales price, right? So when we set up the item, we set up what the sales price is per quantity of that item. So that's the amount it's gonna pull there. So I can add them all here, okay? Notice that for the uh, non-stock, I'm sorry, for the reimbursable group here, um, so the $500 that I had on it as an expense, it sticks it into a group, it says reimbursable subtotal, then it has the 100% markup, and then the final total. And again, that's where you want to pay attention because you don't, you may want to see that internally, but for your customer to see that, um, you want to make sure 
you know, you, you have it printing out appropriately. And then also you want to make sure, see here how there's no notes, right? So you want to make sure that you put notes in the system so that notes pull through. Okay. All right. So that's time and materials, how to add time and materials or reimbursable expenses in QuickBooks.